Hi guys, um, I'm Ben Darrington. Um, I work for Wallace Solution. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about our new blue box system. It's a system. Um, it comes in two forms. Either as the standalone version we call the blue box. And it's also available in what we call blue box embedded. Built into all our WDMX flex units. What is blue box? And what, and what does blue box embedded do? Blue box embedded enables Ethernet to DMX. Um, um, con conversion in, um, in our units as a standalone Ethernet DMX node or built into our wireless DMX transmitters and receivers and it enables our RDM configuration and control software and it all ties back to our blue box software which I'll show you in a minute. Um, the great thing about our system is that we have one piece of software that works for both cable systems and wireless systems with our blue box output nodes and with our um, and with our WDMX um, wireless system. Um, so we can solve all wired and wireless um, signal distribution uh, systems. This makes actually our our flex trans transceivers infinitely more powerful. Today, not only is this unit a transmitter, it also can be switched to a receiver, a repeater, and with our blue box solution, with our blue box embedded solution, it's also an RDM controller, a DMX controller, and an Ethernet node. Um, so everything in one box, and all controllable from that one piece of software. Um, now, why? Let me let, let me let me let me show you the software first, and show you just how easy it is to use. Um, in our, can can everyone see? So in, in our software, we create the concept of a universe. Um, and on a universe, you can do things like, for example, configure the, um, the ArtNet settings so I can change the ArtNet universe. Then all I have to do is take an output node, for example, this node over here, and I can just drag and drop it onto a universe and it automatically connects. So there's no having to worry about ArtNet universe settings or anything like that. It's just a simple drag and drop interface for patching and configuring a, a network system. Then. Um, my, my blue box system is connected through our WDMX transmitter and receiver and to a set of test fixtures um, in the box. So when I press discover, over RDM, we discover and pull back the topology of the entire system. That's the transmitter, the receiver, um, and any, any, any connected fixtures downstream of this. Um, and you can see them here clearly, let's say. So it, it, it allows you to see all RDM um, connected fixtures through that one system and allows you to configure that, the Ethernet to DMX um, 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 network. Now this of course doesn't just have to be, like I said, it doesn't just have to be a wire, wireless system, it also works over, over wired. Now why do we have a separate PC software that's separate from a lighting controller? We believe actually that it's good to have a separation of concerns. So the guy that that is, you know, programming the the, the lighting, you know, making the lights blue or green or whatever, um, is, is not so concerned with rig management, rig configuration, rig setup. So we have a so so this laptop can be used for, for example, um, the lighting technicians um, changing lamps, um, checking if things are overheating, checking if things are about to fail. Um, now. Our, our RDM controller that's built into the same software, so don't forget that this software configures all of the Ethernet to DMX nodes, our wireless system, it, it supports all of the standard RDM commands. So if I have an RDM fixture, I can plug it into this software in, um, through, through either the wired, through, through either the, um, the, the flex uh, transceivers or through the um, blue box output nodes. I can plug in um, RDM enabled fixtures and I will see them here and it supports all the standard RDM commands. The software also supports um, um, advanced RDM commands. So for example, we've, we've created some advanced RDM commands specifically related to our, um, our wireless DMX system. Um, so in this software, I can remotely, for example, connect and disconnect wireless DMX transmitters and receivers. So I don't have to send somebody up into the truss or, um, or in, a, in a difficult to reach location to connect and disconnect the system as well as manage things like signal strength and output power and, and various other elements. Um, so that's, that's, that's it really. We have, we have the, the standalone blue box Ethernet to DMX and RDM controller output nodes. And we have the blue box embedded system, which is Ethernet to DMX conversion and RDM controller built into one where I can transmit then 
um, for example, Artnet in, I can transmit DMX wirelessly, and also if I want to get, um, get um, wired DMX out. Now, one last thing, our standard DMX, um, our standard blue box nodes, I said that they do, for example, Ethernet to DMX conversion. Um, we do have that standalone DMX controller functionality here. If I click on this button, I can see the, the DMX controller functionality. But the great thing about the standalone boxes as well is that they'll work with any standard 5-pin DMX source as well. So I can, I can run in standard 5-pin DMX and get out DMX and RDM merged together with the RDM control from this software. And we think we're, we're, we're the only company that is doing this today, the ability to merge a standard 5-pin DMX signal with RDM and have RDM control and DMX control from a st st separate standalone desk. Uh, does anyone have any questions though on this? Um, how many universes of DMX can you generate from your, each of your boxes? How many universes of DMX do you So, do you so for example, this is the F22 universe um, uh, transceiver. So I can run two universes of Artnet into this and I can get two universes out. Our software can manage an unlimited number of, of, of universes. So I could, have, I could have multiple transmitters, multiple um, nodes in this software, and it all brings it into one wired and wireless um, interface, let's say. Does that give you the possibility of um, accessing any of the RDM via DMX? Were the, were the um, personalities to be written for some of the RDM? Yeah, you, you, this, in this software, if I were, so I don't have a moving head here, but yeah. if I were to plug it into a moving head, yeah. I would be able to see the DMX personality. So I'd see channel right. one is, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is a dimmer and channel two is the cyan and whatever. So you'd, you'd be able to see everything. That's For a stupid pin, uh, <laughs> uh, in uh, five words, uh, what is the difference now? What is the new thing for the older version? What is the really key point? Well, the, the really key point is a consolidated view of, of everything that's going on in your system, Ethernet to DMX, wireless and RDM in one software working with our standalone and embedded systems. It's very, very easy to use. You see, the it's, it's, it's a simple drag and drop interface. And like, like I showed you before, you don't even need to know what Artnet universe you're using. You just set up a u universe here and you just drag and drop the nodes. Um, so if I wanted this node to be on that universe, I just drag and drop it and release it and it's automatically connected. You don't have to worry about numbers. It's just very visual, easy to use drag and drop. It's possible to worry about the numbers. So if I really want to define yeah. which universe, I mean, you, you do have to go into the universe itself and define the universe number, but you don't have to do it for every node. You just drag and drop once you've done the basic settings. I mean, if, if you're interested, I, you, can, you can see, for example, all the advanced RDM information as well. But which I have the uh, interfaces so that uh, end user, for example, uh, cannot access to the uh, settings anymore. So that if you have a, like you, for example, in a big tour, you want to lock everything so that the stagehands or somebody with an extra laptop cannot <laughs> affect your settings. Um, not, not at the moment, but it's, it's, it's a good idea to lock it over Ethernet. So if you plug in a laptop, you won't be able to, to access it. No, normally what we find, though, is that most, most Ethernet lighting networks are separate from anything else. So it's very difficult to physically connect something to it anyway. Like if you have you know, your 30 universe Artnet network, you're not going to let somebody with any laptop just come in and plug into it. So we find that there is an, a physical security with that anyway, that's it. How is the information presented to the technicians? Is it is there a mode by which you can basically monitor the rig or you know scan for problems rather than have to go into individual fixtures and say what's this light doing? Can you say okay, has anybody's bulb failed or who hasn't started? Yeah. So for for, for example, um, if if we were to have a bunch of fixtures here. Um, 
they have they have little icons in the top right hand corner that indicate um, numbers as a number of uh, error messages or failure messages that, 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 that have occurred in the system, let's say. So you can see at a glance when you lay out all your fixtures. I know here I only have a transmitter and receiver, but you could you when you have more fixtures you can see at a glance exactly um, what has a problem. But can you scan for what those kind of problems are? Because quite often you, if, if you were to look on a typical lighting rig, especially when the fixtures are a couple of years old, you might find that maybe 5% of the lights are logging some kind of a, a, an error, be it it's not very happy about its gobo or something. Actually, as far as the light still works, nobody's really bothered about it and they ignore it, but there's certain things you want to know about the late light, like, you know, why isn't the light coming out to the front of it? So is there, is there, how does your... Having this information is one thing, yeah. but actually presenting it in a usable, friendly way to technicians so they're confronted well, with relevant the, information. The, 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 there, are, there are two methods. The first is that our software allows you to acknowledge errors. So once you've acknowledged them, they're suppressed and they won't pop up again. That's the first thing. The second thing is because it's all laid out like the way your rig is laid out, you can, you can say that fixture is not working. Okay, go to the software. This fixture over there is, is that fixture and then look into it and, 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 and it makes it easier. It's not, it's not presented in a list view, it's presented in a graphical view, just like your rig is laid out. So it's very easy to connect, you know, that's not working with something on the screen, that's it. So can you import that uh, from CAD? Can you, how do you get your layouts? Ah, when, 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 you, when you press discover, you get all the fixtures and then you just lay them out in this software. Um, so any, 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 any RDM enabled device that's connected to, to this or that um, will just automatically appear here and then you just lay it out and you can save that layout.